One of the most difficult parts of modeling this assault rifle right here was figuring out how to correctly sharpen the edges which are under the influence of a subdivision surface modifier, such as the edges on this part of the buttstock over here. Now, I made a couple of videos on my channel where I explained about, where I talked about the wrong ways to sharpen your edges which are under the influence of a subdivision surface modifier. I talked about ways which you shouldn't do because they're going to fuck up your topology because they're bad practice for all sorts of reasons. And then somebody asked me a really good question, Aryan, how do you correctly bevel edges when you're trying to sharpen them when they're under the influence of a subdivision surface modifier? I said I would make this video in the last video, so that's what we're going to talk about today. We have this buttstock right here, and I, as you can see right here, we have two separate shapes, or a couple of separate shapes. Mainly you have this thing, which I think is called like the chin guard or something, or the cheek rest, or whatever the fuck. This is where you rest your cheek when you're about to shoot somebody in the head, okay? That's this part which is supposed to look rather soft, which is why I have this kind of leathery texture on it and whatnot. But this particular shape, it's, it's the very basic form is this thing right here. I've separated and I've removed all the bevels which I created, which are supposed to sharpen the edges. And this is what the shape looks like in its raw form. And without the subdivision surface modifier, it looks like this. Now, obviously, I want this to have the subdivision surface modifier because it's supposed to look nice and soft and natural and organic, okay? So we have to add the subdivision surface modifier, but now we got to tighten up the edges a little bit because otherwise it's not going to look right. Now, the wrong way to do this, as we've discussed previously, would be to add a bunch of loop cuts like this, as they tell you in the beginner videos and all this. And the wrong way would also be to select some of these edges and start adding mean creases over here in this menu when you press N in edit mode. That's the wrong way to do it. This is going to fuck up your model for all sorts of reasons that we're not going to get into today, okay? So... The right way to do this is to add bevels, because when you add bevels, this is what I always teach people in my videos, I always say this, when you add bevels, let's say with control B over here, it creates supporting geometry on both sides of this edge. Now, of course, in order to prevent this little curvy shit from taking place over here, you have to set the shape value to one, and you have to have two segments, otherwise it's not going to work properly. So this makes it the same as having an edge loop over here and an edge loop on the inside. So this is how you're perfectly supposed to tighten up your edges. You also want to check whether it works better without or with loop slide down here, but that's a different story. We're going to get to that. Now, the problem is that when you're doing something like this, you might have a model such as this one right here where you have to bevel a whole lot of different edges. And the real question here, or the, the really important thing that you have to pay attention to is how are you going to create the bevel on all these edges? Because you can't just do it one at a time. Basically, you have to do them all together. Let me explain to you why. If we take this edge over here, for example, as we did earlier, and we bevel this, okay. Now we want to move on to the next one, but as you can see now, we got this shitty shape back here, which is obviously not what we want. So we can't just stop this bevel here. Now we can't really continue because we're going to get all sorts of problems, as you can see right now. So what has to happen is we have to have a continuous loop at the very least, like we do right now. And that's kind of going to control how, how this bevel is going to look, and it's going to look a little bit better, and we're not going to have the same amount of artifacts. So that's one thing that you have to consider. You always want to keep continuous loops. But the other thing that you have to keep in mind are the intersections of your bevels. Okay, so there are going to be a lot of situations when you have to, you, you have to control the direction of the loop. Okay, so for example, in this case, let's say we're trying to bevel this edge and this part up here to sharpen all this up. We can't just bevel everything like this. Even if we select all these bevels, all these edges here, we're going to get a problem like this one over here, which is a quad, which looks like a triangle because this one has a vertex on it, which is basically uh, connecting two edges, which have a 180 degree angle. Okay. So that's not a good thing for your topology. That's a really bad thing. Again, we can talk about why in another video, but I talk about this in my videos all the time. So I don't want to get into this in this video. You should watch Thomas Cullen videos to understand this type of shit a little bit better. But in short, you don't want this type of thing to happen. Okay. So the natural solution to something like this, and don't worry, I'm just trying to give you a quick overview of how I'm about to do this. I'm going to show you the final correct way to do this in a second. But in this case, what you have to do is select all the edges which are connected to this vertex over here. And when you do that, we're doing this in edge select mode because in vertex select mode, it's also going to select the faces and vertices, which we don't want to bevel. So when you do this in edge select mode, as you can see now with control B, you can bevel this. And now this is what your geometry is going to look like on this particular region. Okay, let's get rid of the subdivision surface modifier so we can see a little bit better. But as you can see, no triangles, no n-gons, 
No fucked up quads that look like triangles. No, no long, thin faces. Nothing weird is going on. You just have a couple of clean tiles. And that's what your intersection is supposed to look like. So now when you apply the subdivision surface modifier, it looks really, really good. If you look at it from a distance, if you look at it up close, if you use smooth shading, there are no problems with an angle like this. Okay. Now, there's always better ways to do this. When you, when you start learning about topology, you're always going to find a million different ways to do certain things. For example, in this case, somebody could argue that a better way to handle this problem right here would be to create a bevel like this and then set the miter outer shape to arc which gives us an extra edge over here, which just controls the flow of this edge a little bit better. So now we can connect this over here with J and then we have two quads. This can be better in some situations. In other situations, it's gonna give you all sorts of problems. It's gonna give you n-gons and stuff like that. It's gonna give you shading artifacts if this face would be a little bit curved, okay? So sometimes this can work, sometimes it's not going to work. In this case, we have to pay attention to the fact that we're also trying to sharpen up this edge over here, okay? So let's undo a couple of steps. We also have to recognize that we're trying to bevel this edge in the front. And the reason we're beveling this edge in the front is because we have to connect the vertices over here in the front, right? So let's start one by one. Now that I look at it, I think maybe we're going to be able to do this without beveling this edge, in which case it will probably be better to show to use the method that I showed you a second ago. But let's let's give it a crack to give it the final the final resolution. OK, so we're going to definitely try to sharpen these edges over here in the front. All of this is supposed to be sharp. These two triangles are all supposed to be sharp like this. Okay. Also on the other side, I'm just going to select all of those. Now let's see if we got everything right. So far, so good. This has to be sharp. This part over here has to be sharp at the bottom, as you can see in this object down here. So we first have to simultaneously select all those edges. And a lot of times you can do this by just selecting a couple of edges and pressing Shift G, select similar face angle. Okay. And that's going to instantly select all your sharp edges. But in this case, they're not all sharp. They all have different angles. So we're not going to be able to do that. Okay. So we're just going to select all of these edges in the back here. These have to be sharp as well. As you can see, this one has to be sharp because we want this to be a sharp corner. All of this has to be sharpened. This edge down here also has to be sharp. Now, I'm not sure about this one in the front. Let's check if everything's working well so far. Maybe we can get away with this one. Okay. But see, for example, in this case, we don't have to select and sharpen this edge down here because when we bevel this, we already get three quads over here. There's no triangles. There's no problems at all. And if we do select these and bevel them, now we just have extra geometry here. Now we just have this weird twisting. It still works, but it's better if we do it without selecting these edges over here. Okay. And this we're going to be able to connect. So let's try. We also have to select these corners down here. And now, as you can see, as I'm doing this, I select something new and then I quickly press control B to bevel it and then I'll undo it because I just want to get a quick preview of what this part is going to look like, but I'm not ready yet because I didn't select all the edges. So now it seems like everything is fine. It seems like everything is ready to go. I'm just going to give it a quick look. I'm going to make my bevel a little bit larger than it needs to be at the beginning just so I can see what's going on a little bit better. I'm going to give it an inspection to see if I can find any triangles, any twisting, any fucked up things going on. It looks like we don't have any problems right now. We're also going to have to select this part though on the underside here. Okay. And now when we do that, as you can see with the miter outer shape set to arc, as opposed to sharp, we get this nice shape down here at the bottom, which allows us to connect this with J here. You got to make sure to do the same thing on the other side. And indeed I was right. I made an improvement because it looks like we can do this using a better method. And like I told, like I said to you before, this miter outer sh shape, being set to arc gives us a better edge flow. So things flow a little bit better and behave a little bit better when you use this type of geometry here. So let's give it a final overview to make sure that everything is okay. I think everything's fine. All right. Now I can't notice, I can't see anything in this particular video, but maybe I just missed something. Maybe I'll notice something later, but I think it's okay. In any case, I think you understand now how to bevel these things properly. If you want to learn more tips like this, I got a blender school. We got a full breakdown of basically every single blender tool that I ever use in blender and every single technique that I ever use for creating pretty much anything that I ever create in blender. And we also teach people how to put together portfolios and how to get clients and how to use social media to attract attention so they can network and find clients and find jobs and all sorts of things like that. So if you're serious about this 3D modeling thing, and if you want to become a professional, then check out my Blender School. I also got an ebook which is going to teach you all the modeling techniques and stuff like that. Anyway, like the video. Let me know what you want to see next. I'll see you in the next one.